words appear. Our technology for equal access. Mobility impairments. Hello, my name is Cameron, and I have a disability called cerebral palsy. It affects me because my legs aren't able to work as well as others, and it's not as efficient. In the course of my day as a student, I use technology such as Dragon. And Dragon is basically a speech input system that will write for me as I speak into it, and that helps me become more efficient. This is an example of how I use Dragon. REM sleep is when the body goes through multiple stages. REM sleep has four stages. Hello, my name is Blake. I graduated from the University of Washington Tacoma with a Bachelor of Arts in Urban Studies I have cerebral palsy, which means I cannot take notes very quickly. For me, quality education includes access to instructors' presentations, notes, or outlines of the lectures so that I have high-quality notes from class lectures and discussions. In college, I use this Dynavox to communicate with my peers and professors. I used word predictive software called CodeWriter to speed up my typing on assignments and papers. CodeWriter predicts words in a window as one is typing. My name is Teresa, I'm a high school student and after high school I plan on attending college and majoring in psychology, and I was born without arms. I use a Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse so that I have full accessibility and I'm able to write down notes and catch everything that I need to catch in a more efficient way. Without my arms, I have the keyboard and the mouse on the floor and then the monitor is just sitting on my table um, in my classroom. When I'm typing notes, I can usually type pretty fast just because of adrenaline, but um, I'm not Fast, as fast as someone with arms. Hi, my name is Kay and I am a congenital amputee, meaning that I was born with some of my limbs missing. For hardware, I use a Surface Pro 3 and I really like it because it's super lightweight. Um, that was one of my biggest struggles when trying to find a computer to use was that I couldn't lift a lot of laptops that were out. I also love that the Surface is a touchscreen, which is also really helpful for me, because sometimes it's a little much for me to pull out a mouse to use something, so I can just quickly tap on the screen and it works wonders. I use my iPhone for a lot of things. I intentionally got the plus model of the iPhone so it was larger because I knew I would want to do a lot of PDF reading on my phone. I use a tiny mouse on top of that, so many people have a mouse that they like to use with their computer, but all the ones I use are smaller <laughs> because my hand is smaller. So it's way easier for me to use a tinier mouse that are usually like the travel size mice because it just fits my hand better. As for software, the two main things that I use that are not already built into a device because I use many of the built-in features of the iPhone, but I use Sonosent, which is a note-taking software that allows you to sync audio files of the professor or lecturer giving a presentation to slides, if they give you slides, as well as syncing it to notes that you might type during the presentation. Wake up. Hi, comma. My name is Kay, and I'm a senior at the University of Washington, period. I use Dragon Naturally Speaking quite a lot as well. It's really helpful for me whenever I have to write long papers, and sometimes I do it even just for quick emails, but also because of my wrist not being super strong. While I can type and actually type rather quickly, if I have to do it for any long period of time, I will really start to hurt my wrist. Many hardware items have a lot of built-in features. I use a lot of the built-in features on the iPhone, for example. Um, one of my go-to things is the assistive touch. It kind of brings a little on-screen button that you can position wherever you want it, and you can set that button to do a bunch of different things. 
Right now I have it where if I do a long hard push, it automatically locks my phone. I also have it set so I can make it take screenshots for me. Because a screenshot, you have to hold down the home button and the lock button at the same time, which is a little hard with one hand, especially when you only have two and a half fingers. So I really enjoy that feature as well. Jonah. Using technology, it changes every year because I don't know how I'm going to be next year. I mean, a lot of things can happen because as my disease is progressive, I mean, I might be using something new next year. I mean, at the moment, mainly accommodations are just like, for notes, I don't have to write it. My teacher will just give me a copy of their PowerPoint or something. I'll just add maybe little minor things to it. Like, then, I have Words appear. Final thoughts. My name is Cheryl Bergstaller, and I direct accessible technology services at the University of Washington in Seattle. As you can see, it's really important that people with disabilities have access to the technology that they need, including assistive technology, so that they can be successful in education, in careers, and all of the activities that they wish to pursue. It's also important that IT developers, including those that create websites, documents, software, and other IT, make those products accessible to people who are using assistive technology and to everyone else. For more information about IT accessibility, consult uw.edu slash accessibility. This video presentation was created with funding from National Science Foundation grant number CNS-1042260. Copyright 2019, University of Washington. Permission is granted to copy these materials for educational, non-commercial purposes, provided the source is acknowledged. Described by AudioEyes.